Hang on, is that the same color as my shirt? Almost color matching with my MacBook there. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the brand spanking new MacBook Air M2. I've had this for a little over a week now, and I've got some thoughts, as you might expect. Although there were a few things that kind of struck me when I first got this unboxed and started using it. Firstly, I love how we get this color matched MagSafe cable, which goes with my shirt, I mean my laptop, very classy. Second, this new midnight color is gorgeous, but also an absolute fingerprint and smudge magnet. Either bring a microfiber cloth with you or perhaps go for Starlight instead. Thirdly, where did the MacBook Air logo go? Is this one of the upgrades? And finally, and possibly a little bit more seriously, if you've already got a MacBook Air M1, this will feel very, very familiar. It's much more of a refinement than a revolution, like we saw going from the Intel to M1 MacBook Air in 2020. Now, if you have been living under a rock for the last month or so, let me give you a quick recap of this. And first, if I move my little plant out of the way, let's also bring in the MacBook Air M1. Because while this is an incredible laptop in its own right, you can't consider that without also considering this. It's its predecessor and also competitor. So if you're happy to pay the extra $200 or £250 over the M1 Air, then you can bag yourself one of these with the new M2 chip, faster memory, a slightly bigger and brighter screen, a 1080p FaceTime camera, a new quad speaker setup with support for Apple's spatial audio, the function row on the top of the keyboard is now full size, the touchpad is a tiny bit bigger, we now get MagSafe charging, a slightly longer battery life, a couple of new colors, and quite a substantial redesign. It's a touch thinner and lighter overall, but Apple's done away with the Air's classic tapered look. And so instead, the M2 Air now more closely resembles the MacBook Pro 14. It is still a fanless design though, which means it's completely silent. So there are some genuinely nice upgrades here, and I reckon this probably is the ultimate thin and light laptop, but this is also the most expensive MacBook Air ever at 1250 pounds. There are student discounts, but it does beg the question, has it become too expensive and is, as I say, the MacBook Air M1 still the better option? Well, to be fair, I think when you take into account the Windows competition and also the quality of the laptop you're getting for this kind of money, it's not unreasonable, but I just think it's that pesky M1 Air that starts at 999 that's really throwing a bit of a spanner in the works. And on the other side, if you go for the more expensive 10 core GPU option or you start adding more RAM or more storage, which honestly, I don't think I'd really recommend because then you're getting very close to MacBook Pro 14 territory, which gets you that 120 Hertz ProMotion screen. It's mini LED, it supports HDR, so it gets a lot brighter. You get way more ports and the M1 Pro is still significantly more powerful. But let's put pricing to one side for a second and focus on some of the upgrades. And a key one is this webcam. So this is being shot on the new 1080p webcam on the MacBook Air M2 and this is what you're getting on the current M1 Air with its 720p webcam. Now, it's a pretty significant difference, particularly in lower light. I noticed uh, there's a lot less noise, and of course, being high resolution, it is sharper and more detailed. Just looking at the screens, really, my face looks weirdly yellow and very soft on the Air uh, M1 uh, versus a much more clear and slightly more natural looking M2. However, with the upcoming macOS Ventura software, and if you pair it with an iPhone running iOS 16, you can use the new continuity cameras. So you can basically use your iPhone as a really high quality webcam on top of your Mac. It's a bit fussy, but if you are taking regular important video calls, you can just strap your phone to your MacBook Air M1 instead perhaps and save some money. Let's talk about design because while the new MacBook Air may not look as futuristic as something like this, the Dell XPS 13 Plus, do let me know if you'd like to see a full versus video with these two by the way, but I would still take the MacBook, not just all, simply because of that keyboard, that touchpad and that webcam, which are pretty much the best you can get right now. So the M2 Air is now a uniform 11.3 mil thick and also tips the scales at 1.24 kilograms, which actually makes it 50 grams lighter than the M1 Air. So this is a great size for students, for taking it to the office or just moving it around the house with you as you pretend to work from home. As usual, it is made from a single unibody piece of aluminium or uh, aluminum for my American friends. But the most important question is what color would you go for? Uh, and between the two new ones, Starlight or Midnight, I reckon I made the right choice here with Midnight. Although as you can see, it is very bluish uh, when it hits the light. It's not like a matte black uh, completely. It's like a nice sort of slate gray blue to it. Very nice. Although as you can see, very smudgy as well. 
The only minor compromise with this design is the fact that we get this chunky notch that juts out from the top of the screen. Although it does mean we get that top notch webcam. I'll stop. But macOS does utilize the screen space. It pushes everything up, uh, so we get the mini bar up here now. So that 13.6 inch screen is a little bit bigger than 13.3 on the M1 Air. And also when you're watching movies and TV, it's blacked out anyway by the letterboxing. Although, unlike the inky blacks on the mini LED MacBook Pro screens, the physically black notch does stand out from the darkish gray letterboxing of that LCD screen. And to be fair, a 60 Hertz LCD non-touch screen for 1250 pounds in 2022 is starting to feel a little bit old hat now. But the combination of the slightly bigger screen, thanks to the thinner bezels and the extra space we get around the notch, the slightly increased brightness, also the fact that this supports now 1 billion colors. So in theory, we should see a smoother gradation uh, between different colors on screen. Although I've been watching some stuff side by side, it's kind of hard to tell, but a professional may be able to tell. So it is still a very good screen. It's color accurate, it gets quite bright. I think the resolution, which works out to be roughly quad HD, is a really good balance uh, for sharpness and battery life at the screen size. But I do think when you consider the Windows competition and the fact that you can get an Asus Vivo book with an OLED screen for like 450 pounds now, high refresh, mini LED OLED options, I do kind of wish we'd seen a bigger upgrade for the display. We do also get the same two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports, but now the 3.5mm jack supports high impedance headphones, one for the audio files there. And of course we now get MagSafe, which obviously frees up one of your USB ports from charging. The downside is we are still limited to one external display on the MacBook Air. If you do want a multi-monitor setup, then you'll have to go for a Pro 14 or 16, although you could always output to one monitor and sidecar with your iPad. I've also got this guy. It's the new 35 watt dual charger. So rather than one USB-C on the back, you've got two. So you can plug in your iPad and your MacBook and it supports dynamic charging. So it will charge them both equally until one's complete and then it'll switch over. And although this is 35 watts, it will charge the air at the same rate as the standard 30 watt charger that you get bundled. This is normally a 30 pound optional extra unless you go for a slightly higher spec model, in which case this or the 67 watt fast charger is free, which will actually top this up from zero to 50 in about half an hour. I think I'd probably go for that over the flexibility of the extra USB-C ports, but it's nice to have the option. I was gonna say that was very, very impressive what you did back there. I was gonna say that was very, very impressive what you did back there. The M2 Air also gets an upgraded quad speaker setup. And while they do sound good and are certainly among the better speaker systems you can get on a laptop this size, I was a little bit disappointed it wasn't a particularly noticeable improvement over the M1 Air. You can hear a touch more bass and also there's a little bit more clarity at higher volumes, but really there's not much in it. And both the Airs are blown away by the MacBook Pro 14. So the speakers are a tiny bit better and we've got the new high impedance uh, 3.5mm headphone jack but I think the biggest upgrade for audio is the fact that this now supports Apple's spatial sound. So if you pair it with a pair of uh, AirPods or recent Apple or even Beats earphones and you're watching a video or movie or even on a FaceTime call that supports it, you can essentially get Dolby Atmos spatial sound so it sounds a lot more immersive. Okay, so far so good but let's talk about the headline upgrade, that new M2 chip. I think it's fair to say that that transition from Intel to Apple's own silicon with the M1 a couple of years ago was probably the biggest leap forward we saw for laptops in the last 10 years or so. The jump up to M2, however, is nowhere near as significant, but we're still looking at a roughly 20 to 30% boost over the M1 which is a nice little optic. And also with the addition of the media engine, which until now was reserved only for the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, if you are video editing, this will have a big impact on that performance as well. But outside of that and shaving a few minutes off an export or a render, there's nothing the M2 Air can do that the M1 Air can't. And if you are concerned about performance and perhaps you're looking at going for more powerful 10 core GPU or up to 24 gigs of unified memory, if those performance so questions are whirring around in your brain. Again, this is not the one for you. Get the M1 Pro in the 14 or the 16. So here are a few of my benchmark results. And actually we're looking at only between sort of seven and 18% boost uh, in these two tests. To be fair though, traditional benchmarks don't really paint the full picture of the faster neural processing, the extra media engine, the higher bandwidth unified memory, all that Apple stuff. 
And so bringing in the Premiere Pro Puget Test, the M2 scored 35% higher. And in my 5 minute 4K H264 export test, the M2 shaved off over 2.5 minutes, making it around 30% faster. And then in Lightroom, with my photo export test, it was over 30% quicker. Even Shadow of the Tomb Raider was a playable 42 FPS. So regular games, if I can call them that, definitely play better on the M2, but you're still limited by what's available on Mac. So really, your best bets for gaming are to dive into the Apple Arcade or streaming with GeForce Now or Xbox. Just pair a controller, make sure you've got a fast internet connection, and away you go. Day to day, with app loading times, desktop use, you know, normal stuff, there's nothing really between them. But if you push it harder in more demanding apps, you will see a small but noticeable benefit with the M2. And also, so far at least, I haven't experienced the out of memory pop-up that has come up a couple of times for me on the M1 in the past. So I reckon you're good to stick with the 8 gigs. So this really is an incredibly powerful laptop for its size. And of course, being fanless, it doesn't make a noise at all. Although I did find it got quite warm underneath when I was rendering or gaming. But, 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 the real surprise for me was that despite the bigger screen, despite that extra 25 odd percent increase in performance, I also got a longer battery with this. Even Apple says they should be about the same between the M1 and M2 Airs, and according to them, only the M2 Pro 13 can last a couple extra hours. Well, I can tell you that five hours of YouTube on the M2 Air in Safari and at 50% brightness used 35% of the battery, which means a whopping 15 hours should be achievable. But I can also tell you that in my slightly more realistic rundown test of YouTube, Premiere, File Cut, Lightroom, Websites, Google Docs, Apple TV, FaceTime, the M1 Air lasted 8 hours and 50, and the M2 Air lasted 10 hours 15. In fact, the M2 still had 10% of its battery left when the M1 died. You can get an extra about an hour on the M2 over the M1. So while the M2 is still based on the same 5 nanometer architecture, clearly those efficiency gains, the uh, faster unified memory, it all comes together and we're getting, well, a faster, longer lasting laptop that's also brighter with a slightly bigger screen as well. Not too shabby. Okay, so let's wrap this up. And as I said at the beginning, if you do already own an M1 Air, you do not need to buy this. However, if you are after a new thin and light laptop for emails, Netflix, a bit of work, and you just want yourself a slightly nicer Air experience, then yeah, get yourself the new MacBook Air M2. You're not gonna be disappointed. It is a fantastic laptop. But personally, I wouldn't bother paying extra for more RAM, more storage, or the higher core GPU. I know I keep coming back to this, but then the 14 inch Pro makes more sense. Sorry, what's that? What about the new Pro 13 with the M2? Uh, for 100 quid more, you can get the MacBook Pro 13 M2, but it's the old design, it still has a touch bar, it's got the rubbish webcam, I wouldn't really recommend it. In its favor, it does have a fan, so you're going to get slightly better sustained performance, uh, and also Apple say it should have a little bit of a longer battery life, but this already lasts basically forever anyway. So outside of a very niche group of people who really want the old style MacBook with a touch bar and definitely have to have a fan, no one should really consider the 13 inch M2. But what about you though? If you are thinking about upgrading, do you have your heart set on the new M2, or are you going to save a few quid with the M1, or pay a bit more for the 14, or none of the above? Let me know in the comments below. And also again, apologies for a somewhat slightly sweaty and horsey time because I'm still pretty unwell with COVID, but nothing will stop me making videos. Nothing. So if you did enjoy this, then a cheeky little like and subscribe would be very much appreciated, and I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.